Jason, DeVito, your family's neighbor. Oh, hi, Sam, Dalton, the brother, which you obviously already know, obviously. I've said obviously twice. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Welcome back. That was Jonathan Bennett, who is one of our faves in his new Christmas movie, The Holiday Sitter. He's here to get us into the holiday spirit and just in good spirits all around. Please welcome back to the show, Jonathan Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, oh, JB. How you doing, boo-boo? <laughs> Miss everybody. It's so good to see your faces. We miss oh, you. It's so good to see you too. All right, let's get to uh, this movie because we want to know how did your experience with kids on the set of a movie you did a few years ago um, inspire the holiday sitter? Oh, okay. We want to talk about that. Let's talk about it. So um, I did a Hallmark movie years ago called Christmas Made to Order, and we were actually shooting in a house. And the family that owned the house we were filming in had four kids and they would bring them to set every day. And I would just start entertaining them and like juggling. I basically became like a birthday party clown <laughs> for these kids. And the mom leaned over to me and she's like, you need to do a movie where you play like a Manny. Like you're not a nanny, you're a manny. And you have to take care of the kids. And that sparked the idea. And then it just kind of transformed from there where one of my favorite movies growing up was Uncle Buck. Yes. So I was like, what if Uncle Buck was gay? <laughs> uh, and hence, the Holiday Sitter was born. And so we kind of pulled from that, but then over time, it's evolved into its own movie that is totally separate. So it's got, but it's got a lot of, a lot of the same qualities of like, I think it's so funny when an uncle has to come home or a gunkle and take care of their niece and nephew that they have know nothing about. Because fish out of water stories are always funny. They sure are. <laughs> Hello, my good friend. Uh, I have a more serious question for you and it kind of deals okay, with what- Okay, what's the serious question? Let's get serious. No, but I, I do want to hear your opinion. I've been waiting a long time to hear this. There's some controversy over holiday movies, over uh, Candace Cameron Bure and what she said about traditional marriage, okay? And we have Neil Bledsoe. He just exited the great American family because of her comments. And I just wanted to have you have the floor and say, how did executive producing and starring in an LGBTQ plus led movie on Hallmark help you tell the story that you wanted to tell? Well, I think, look, I can't, you know, I don't know what other networks are doing I, or what the, all of their viewers are going to see. But I know like what the viewers at Hallmark Channel are going to see is a story and a network that's filled with inclusivity yeah. and filled with love and filled with heart and filled with family, whether that family is biological or chosen. And so to be a part of a network like Hallmark Channel that puts inclusivity at the forefront of their storytelling, it's the best thing in the world, you know, for me to be able to make that. And as a queer filmmaker, what Hallmark Channel has done for me is made a safe space yeah. for queer people to tell stories. Yeah. And if you're an artist, there is no bigger blessing than to have a safe space to do your art. I'm so and happy so for you, Jonathan. It's just, it's like, I, can't, I literally can't say enough about Hallmark Channel and how they've been so supportive of this journey and like, hey, I want to tell this story. And from the get go, they've just been like, yes, yes, absolutely, let's do it. And I'm like, hey, can we have like a really good, I don't want to spoil it, but you know how the Hallmark movies end sometimes, yeah, sometimes. you know, with a very Juicy passionate kiss. moment at the end. <laughs> yes, and I said, hey, can we do, like, I want to go for it and this, and they're like, absolutely, oh, you have wow. to be part of the story. So yes. it's, um, it's, it was important to us when making this movie to, just tell an authentic story of what a person that is gay in 2022 is dealing with yeah. and like what a real story of like finding love to them looks like. Yeah. And I think when you base a story in authenticity and truth, you get the heart, you get the humor, you get all those things, but we never set out to make a gay Hallmark right, movie or right. a gay Christmas movie. It's a movie. love film, it's this just a love movie, film. Yeah, this movie's not made for a queer audience or an LGBTQ plus audience. It's made for everybody mm -hmm. and everyone will be able to relate to the story because every because because Christmas is for everybody. Yes. Hallmark channels for everybody. The holiday sitters for everybody. So I feel like when people watch it, there's so many things 
in these characters that they're going to be able to identify with. And I think that's what sets this movie apart from so many others. I can't Mazel wait. Tub. Beautifully stated. Beautifully stated. And speaking of your co-stars, Jonathan, you posted this hilarious video of you and co-star George Chris on <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. What is going on here? Wait, what's the video? I can't see it. You guys are, have, it looks like Nerf guns and you're you're oh, ambushing yeah, his well, trailer. <laughs> okay, look, look, George and I. Uh, and he's first shirtless. Of all, we, George Krissa is the unicorn <laughs> we've been waiting for for this movie because to, to cast the role of Jason, he had to have so many qualities. He had to be hunky. He had to be handsome. He had to have blue eyes, be good with comedy. There's so many things that we needed. And I was like, I don't know if we're going to find this guy. And all of a sudden, George Krissa came on screen. And I was like, we found the guy. So from the, every moment we worked together on set, we it was so much fun because we had like, normally you have a co-star that's a girl, and in this, it was two guys, so boys will be boys. Like, we're, like they're gonna screw with each other, they're gonna punch each other, we're gonna like <laughs> shoot nerf guns at each other, so every day was just like a battle of who can outdo the other one and like cause the most chaos to the other person on set. <laughs> and like, when you know, you're working with someone like Lacey Chabert or, you know, Nikki Deloche or some of the girls, you're like, oh, they're so beautiful and sweet and kind. I don't want to like, even, I don't want to hurt them. Like I don't want, they're, they're so lovely and just nice that I can't like screw with them too much. But George, it's like gloves off. I love it. I You could with Nikki Deloche though. I know her, she's yeah, a no, tough one. You're, she's but a tough one. they're just so nice. I know, but don't like, underestimate. Don't underestimate her. Jonathan, we, we love you. You gotta get back in the studio. Please. I'm gonna put some pressure on you. Excuse me, what? Okay, great. Okay, we good. We can talk about all the hot topics. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have our people call your people. Thank you for chatting with us. Thank you, Jonathan. DBL Nation, you can watch Jonathan's new movie, The Holiday Sitter, out this Sunday on the Hallmark Channel. We'll be right back. Bravo. Congrats, Bye, honey. Man. Congrats. Thanks, guys.